Welcome back to the Azure Enablement Show. Hey, have people asked you about reserved instances and whether you should be using them? We're going to talk about that on this show, but that may not be the right question to ask. So join us here on the Azure Enablement Show. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Azure Enablement Show, where we're doing this cloud clinic and answering your questions. And to do that, we bring out an expert. Let's bring Magnus on. Hey, Magnus, how's it going? It's going very well. Hello. So um, I have a question for you from Myra in Rhode Island in the US. Um, and Myra wanted to know um, about saving money, something we've talked a little bit about before, but this is a very specific question. And I want to sort of see if we can dig into this question. So um, apparently she's seeing um, Cloud Advisor say, the advisor, the advisor stuff say that they can save a lot of money if they configure reserved instances for their servers. How, how do they go about doing that? Is, that? is that what they should do? Should they follow this recommendation? What do you think? Ooh, I, I love this question. This is a, this is a great question. This is one of those questions that sounds like it's one thing, but it's actually about, about something completely different. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give you um, as a let's let's do this as an example. Okay. Uh, I was working with this uh, this customer, and they were going to save, if I recall, it was something like two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars if they configured reserved instances. So you can imagine that they're like, "Oh, that's a lot of money." Can we save all that? What should we do? How do we configure reserved instances? Um, and then they realize that actually configuring what's called reserved instances, uh, that's for, for example, your virtual machines, you uh, pre-allocate the, the uh, reserve the, the VM instance or many instances for one year or for three years. And when you do that, Azure will give you a big fat discount on that because you have, you have already committed. Uh, you have to withdraw those funds, for example, if you have an enterprise agreement, you have to take that money from there. So, but but doing it, just configuring it, is, I, I kid you, it's like next, next finish, we're done. Technically, this is now configured. However, right, if you're going to spend, you know, $225,000, maybe you should go and ask your manager. That, that might be a good thing to do. So... They did. They asked, uh, should we configure for, for buying, like saving all this money? Um, and then the conversation starts because then you realize while it is next, next finish to actually do it, while it, what it sounds like, how do you configure reserved instances? The question is more, should we configure reserved instances? Mm. And, and <laughs> this is where everything starts to happen. Now it's getting really interesting. Okay. What do you mean by should we do it at all? Because presumably they need to run workloads right on Azure. So what you know? What are you recommending instead? For example, yeah, exactly. I recommend that they have a, a a a a real and truthful you know conversation about whether we as a business should be uh, using virtual machines uh, to run our workloads uh, in Azure, or we should consider if some of those workloads might actually run equally well on a platform service like a, an app service or 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 anything else um and and that's the conversation that's the real conversation to have because um some organizations are very very accustomed to using virtual machines they've been doing that for gosh you know 25 years so they know that they know how to do this they're very you know comfortable in that world uh, however when you start using the cloud there's a risk that you bring all the um Habits that you are comfortable with, uh, I shouldn't say old habits, but yes, the things you have done for a long time, right? You bring that with you to the cloud and then you behave in the same way in this new platform, which could be good, which could be fine. And your workloads are working, your customers seem happy, you're paying the Azure bill, but it's not going to be great because you've missed a large part of the point, which is, should we use platform services? And then if you start to ask yourself that question, should we try to go away from using virtual machines and, and, use, and, and simply deploy our applications to platform services? Then the question becomes, can we? Do we know how to do that? Do we have people with cloud skills and cloud experience that are not you know, uh, um, only from a, a VM-centric worldview, but who also can use these platform services? That's the real conversation. So I can hear people at home saying like, 
what's the problem here? You know, like VMs are VMs are cool. Like yeah. when you say platform, when you say platform services uh, or like app services or using some of the like I don't know hosted databases, for example, right. I can think of other things that that are platform services on Azure. Um, but what, what's the big deal here? What, what are you what are you getting by making that switch? Because I because I you know I, I know some people are going to be really curious like why are you so strong why 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 are you dissing VMs so hard yeah so. I get it so I'm, I'm not necessarily dissing VMs in, in some in, there are many real scenarios where the workload needs to work run on a VM and that and a VM is the best option that's completely fine however I see a lot of workloads that are for example just a database or a database server with some databases in it or or a VM running uh, an IIS servers and, and, and you deploy a bunch of web apps to that. Well, you can pick the web apps out, you can pick the databases out and deploy them into Azure and, and they will run just as good, just as well, and they can scale and they, they, they work really, really well, but there is no virtual machine. So what happens is you remove from your workload, from the things you do, you remove the virtual machine. Now for all the wonderful benefits of work, virtual machines, they do also have, come with some baggage, right? You have to maintain them, you have to update the OS, you have to patch them, and you have to uh, also realize that no virtual machine runs at a, a you know, full CPU all the time. <laughs> they, they, will, they will be mostly um, underused, right? They will be, have a, a CPU percentage at 10, 12%. If it's 15, then it's great, right? So, there's a lot of waste involved in running virtual machines. You might, you might want to consider getting rid of that and moving to a world where you can scale uh, much more quickly. Your, your uh, infrastructure can, can be more agile. All the beautiful values of the cloud are in more in the platform services, even though virtual machines also run really well on Azure. Okay, so that, that's a compelling argument. Let me ask the question that we like to ask in almost every video, which is, okay, how would this person get started? That is a great question. You need to inventory your situation and you need to be honest and truthful there. You will find some people who maybe don't want to move to virtual machines. They don't want to change because maybe they feel out of place in this uncomfortable new landscape they need to now learn new things. Oh my gosh, learning new things. That's, that can be stressful. And, and I, I wanna have you know, maximum respect for that feeling. Um, and, and, and also, like, again, do we have people that are going to lead this charge or, or this change? Uh, or do we need to invest in some training? So take inventory, take inventory of your people, your staff, your attitudes, but also your skills and figure out where to go. Uh, learn about this, set up a, a task force with the first project, um, pull together some people that can do it, let them take one workload and do it and start gaining an understanding of what the difference is for your organization here. Okay, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, I hope it made sense to you, Myra. Thank you so much for asking the question and thank you, Magnus, for answering it. And thank you everybody for watching this. Um, I hope that you will join us again. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to leave, the, leave them in the comments so we can answer them as well. So thank you for watching and please join us again here on the Azure Enablement Show.